More than likely, if you're involved with horses, you've used a bit. You're probably familiar with bits, their various shapes and textures, as well as some of the traditions and fashions that surround bits. But have you considered what really happens with the bit inside your horse's mouth? It is this very question that led the Myler brothers of Marshfield, Missouri to discover how bits were really working with their horses. Aiming toward effective communication between horse and rider, Ron, Dale, and Bob, all experienced horsemen, wanted to understand the pressures caused by bits and why so many horses developed bit resistance. In the process, the Milers created an innovative system of bitting, one that may be described as a whole bit better. Welcome to Morrisville College. We're standing in the stallion barn facility. Today we're here to talk about bridle bits, specifically Myler bridle bits. My brother Ron Myler trained cutting horses for a lot of years. And all the time he was training horses, he was building bits for the horses because he was trying to figure out how to get a horse more relaxed into the bridle so the training become easier for him and the animal. He also, as he was doing this, he did realize that bridle bits don't train horses. Riders and trainers train horses. A bit only allows a horse to be more relaxed into a bridle or become more evasive. So all the time that he was training, he was trying to figure out how to make this possible to get his animals more relaxed into the bridle for him. Then in 1987, other people were starting to want some of the bridle bits that he had designed. So he started doing some bits and he would go out and he would sell a few bits. He'd come back, build a few more, go out and sell them. And as it progressed, then uh, he asked if I would come into the business with him. So then I started into the business with him and I started going to shows and stuff. And then our other brother, Bob, he wanted to join the company. And that's how the company was formed. Today, everybody's involved. If you walk a horse away from you, or you bring him towards you and this horse is lame, you can see that and tell it. If you're brushing a horse and he starts to flinch, then you know he's becoming sore someplace. There's so many things you can tell from the outside of a horse, and that's why we feel the mouth is probably the most misunderstood part of a horse, because nobody takes the time to open the mouth, look inside, and see what's happening. Now, there's a lot of theories about bridle bits and communication with horses. And we feel that there's a lot of misconceptions. And so what we're trying to do is to go and educate people and give them a better idea how the bridle bit works inside of the horse's mouth and the pressure points it puts on a horse and the pressure points it releases a horse. Through this education, we're hoping you'll have a better idea how to bit your horse properly to allow him to become more relaxed into the bridle. Prior to Dale's seminar on bits, bit action, and bit usage, the Milers would like to point out a few things. First, bits do not train horses. Riders and trainers train horses. The bit is a communication tool which either causes a horse to be more comfortable or more evasive, but it does not train a horse. Second, you need to consider your horse's overall health, especially his dental health. It is very important that your horse's mouth be in good condition and regularly checked by a qualified veterinarian or equine dentist. And finally, you should be familiar with the points of pressure caused by a bit and the various parts of a bit. All right, right now we're going to talk about the basic pressure points that may be used by a bridle.